Hey everyone and welcome back to another Terrarium update. Today we're going to be taking the one year look at the native Terrarium from How To Terrarium Episode 3 and the cactus Terrarium from How To Terrarium Episode 4. This is an update that I really don't want to do as you probably saw by the thumbnail and the video description. You should know this is not clickbait, I don't do that sort of thing so you should know what you're about to see. I know that a lot of you guys are really looking forward to the update on these but it is what it is so I'll show you what's going on. So here are the terrariums. On my right is the native terrarium and on my left is the cactus terrarium. And a similar situation happened in both cases however with the native terrarium it was not my fault whatsoever whereas with the cactus terrarium it was pretty much all my fault. Before we get into this I want to make one thing clear. I've always been and always will be 100% authentic with you guys. I've never once put on a show to try to make myself look good and the case of these terrariums is no exception. I could have easily not done the update, not done the video and just swept them under the rug, never talked about them again. It would have left you guys wondering but it would have been an easy way for me to avoid doing this video. However, I'm making this video so that you guys can learn from my mistakes and not repeat them and have better success with these terrariums than I did as well as show you that no matter what walk of life you're in, no matter who you are, no matter how good you are at something, there's always room for failure. You're always going to fail and it's just a matter of how you deal with it. And this is the way that I'm dealing with it. I'm showing you guys, I'm telling you exactly what happened and you guys can av avoid the simple mistakes I made with these terrariums. So let's get into the update. We're going to start out with the native terrarium. So I'll start out by just doing a little turnaround, show you guys what's going on in here. And as I had expressed last time, the worms were eating the plants. And this time around, it's no exception. I've seen them eating the plants and I know for sure they're the culprits. And for that reason, that is why I say this, the way that this terrarium looks is not at all my fault. I could tell that the plants were doing well in terms of they had acclimated. so. Typically with native plants, sometimes they just can't thrive in a terrarium environment. But in this instance, I could tell that they were all doing well, but I just, I definitely just think the worms had something to do with it. Now you can probably see them in here, the isopods. We have a huge colony of thriving isopods in here right now. And it only started out with a few of them. I think there was like three or four and just looking now I can see like 20 of them but I know there's more than that in here and possibly the isopods have contributed to the plants being decimated as well so I think what I'm going to do is go back in the woods and just get a ton of leaf litter and physically stock this enclosure with leaf litter to feed the isopods feed the worms so that way we don't keep having this problem I'll just feed them basically to keep them off of the plants. And unfortunately, I don't see any of the worms right now. Otherwise, I would show you guys them as well. So what my plan is for this terrarium is simply just to do an overhaul. So we use all of the same materials, all of the same dirt, driftwood, everything, but we'll clean out the container and kind of start from scratch again, kind of rescape it a little bit and put in a ton of new plants. And we'll also do that leaf litter thing that I had mentioned earlier. During the process, we will separate all of the microfauna and we'll put them back in here, but I just wanna make sure that they won't be harmed during the overhaul of this. And you might be thinking, man, I wanna make a native terrarium, but I don't want this to happen to me. Well, it's quite simple. All you have to do is sanitize the substrate and the driftwood prior to putting it into your terrarium. Now, the likelihood of stuff coming in on the plants, it, it could happen that way as well, but it's less likely. So for the substrate, you could simply bake it in the oven uh, at about 275 to 350, somewhere in that range, Fahrenheit that is, and just bake it for a good 15 minutes or so. That will remove anything that's in it, any of the microfauna that's living in the substrate, they'll be killed. So your substrate will be sterilized. And then with the driftwood, you could also bake that, but I prefer to boil them. I think it's a more just the easier method to do. So there's not really much else to say about this other than we're gonna redo it. In an upcoming video, we'll go out, we'll get materials again, basically just the same thing over again, but we'll redo this terrarium, we'll make it look pristine again, and hopefully we'll get these microfauna in check. 
So, let's move on to the cactus terrarium. And so here we have the cactus terrarium. I want to start off by saying that the reason that this was unsuccessful has nothing to do with the way that it was constructed. I'm extremely confident that if you follow the steps that I did to make this terrarium in that video, you will have success so long as you care for the cacti accordingly. Now, in my case, it just it came down to me not caring for the cacti properly. And what I mean by that is I underwatered them a lot. And there are a couple of reasons why this happened, and I'm not trying to make excuses for myself with this, but I'll just tell you what happened. So basically, I keep this up in my bedroom, and I pretty much spend most of my time down here in the basement, which you guys know is the animal room. So I don't typically... The, the only thing I do in my room is sleep. So it's already kind of out of the way for me to water this, and that's a terrible excuse. I should take the time to just quickly water this thing. But I wasn't doing that initially. On top of that, I also had issues with my scoliosis as well as having mono a couple of months back. So really, that's whenever I started to notice that the cacti started to show signs of underwatering. And at that point, I could have easily started watering them more and just taking better care of this thing, but I didn't. I the thing with mono is it kind of gives you like mood swings, so I really didn't care about it. I was just like, man, I don't care about this terrarium anymore. I'll pretty much just let it die. And I wish that I wouldn't have had that mentality, but there's no point in looking back on the past and having regrets. It doesn't do anything for anyone. So to make a long story short with this terrarium, basically it just came down to neglect. I didn't water it properly. I wasn't taking care of the plants properly and they died. It has nothing to do with the terrarium itself and do I wish I would have taken better care of it? Sure, because I would like it to still be alive, but there's, there's no point in having regrets about it. I did what I did and I have to fess up to it. So that's what happened with this one. What I want you to take away from it is simple. Just if you're going to have cacti, water them properly. Also, keep things in a location that you know you can care for them. With this one, I should have known better. I shouldn't have been keeping it up in my room because, as I explained earlier, I'm less inclined to take care of stuff that are up there because I'm pretty much never in my room. However, with this, I had to keep it up there because that's the only place that I could provide adequate lighting. That said, moving forward, I will likely... Whenever I do another cactus terrarium, I'll probably keep it down here and just do artificial lighting. I didn't want to do it for this terrarium, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do to just ensure that I take care of it properly. Because as you can see, I've got a ton of stuff in my animal room and I take care of it very well. So it's just a matter of having it all in the same location, pretty much. If it's all scattered around, I can't really take care of it as well. So that's what's going on with these terrariums. We will be doing a little overhaul on this one in the coming weeks, and it will be pretty cool. Keep you posted on this one. And as far as the cactus terrarium is concerned, this will be the final update for it. As I said, we're gonna try to salvage the rabbit ear cactus, but everything else in here Unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to let it go. All of the raw materials we can salvage, and whenever I reboot the How To Terrarium series, I will make another cactus terrarium and prove myself there. I hope that you guys will understand what happened in the case of this. I hope you won't be too hard on me. Uh, it's not easy to just come up here and tell you guys, man, I screwed up, but I would rather tell you guys that I screwed up than hide from it or try to act like I didn't do anything wrong because it was all on me. So that's about it for this update. I doubt that you enjoyed it as much as other updates, but it is what it is. Sometimes it's not all fun and games here at Serpa Design. I got to tell it like it is. And as I said, I hope you guys will understand. So as always, I appreciate you and I thank you for watching. If for some reason you liked the video, definitely hit a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. I will completely understand. Leave your comments and concerns down in the comment section below, and I'll get to you guys as quickly as I possibly can, and I'll see you guys next time.